early. Family. Man, with Virgil, yeah, yeah, like you know, I was having an interesting conversation, bro, about how, uh, you know, like Virgil's impact on, uh, you know, not just like fashion, culture, but like culture, culture you know what I'm saying? And uh, uh, we were talking about how, like, he really kind of like upped the taste of, I guess, the younger generation, like made made us care more about, and even the generation younger than me, like made us care more about like luxury items and like what i guess changed what luxury items looked like you know what i'm saying like luxury brands now emulate streetwear brands right. as opposed to vice versa you right. know what i'm saying and i kind of you know i view it differently i view virgil as an individual a designer that was able to keep you know the the traits of his childhood intact mm -hmm. as he traversed into these spaces where the traits you of know, his childhood that's interesting yeah, what do you, you mean you, you, so like the thing is when your childhood mind is really your truly your most creative your most oh yeah big mind, facts the mind big that facts. doesn't really listen to any type of uh constraints yeah or blocks of anything so and what you realize is you know living in this world you're always it's like a never-ending battle of shit trying to like suppress that or like yo nah it doesn't work like that or mm -hmm. to be creative that's not it, how we do it, things it's, it's, here no like, status quo yeah like, exactly and so it's like it's not like a literal thing but it's just like life and the happenings of life and all of that's always trying to beat that out of you so when you able to channel that into whatever your practice or whatever your discipline is yeah then i really think it shines through so what virgin was able to do right was really able to offer and integrate perspective into what people viewed like design of what it should be mm -hmm. right because there's somebody that's coming from a streetwear background you know but um and uh so he would take something like for instance when you look at the and you know i'm definitely fast forward through a lot but you know he definitely had his power x vision and you know, he was definitely like you know off his you know being a mentee when he was getting the game like from the taz arnold's of the world or the carl lagerfelds of the world but that off-white all it was was really just a change of perspective. Mm -hmm. It was like, well, what if we deconstruct a shoe, <laughs> Fact. deconstruct a shoe and put it in another way? And it's funny because usually um, a lot of brands, especially like these household brands, would go straight to like, yo, you're taking our shit. Like, let's go like get on his ass. Oh, yeah. Like, like, cease like, and desist. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm top, saying? Right? Hell yeah. But Hell what yeah. you're starting to realize, you know, within the culture is like, and i think we had even talked about we it had before, talked about this bro Gucci ghost, right? yeah because it's Gucci... like there's a fine line between um there's a fine line between taking something and just flipping it uh, i mean that's what that's what these guys do like um i remember we were in a, uh, we were talking we started this conversation started because we were talking about nfts right. and i was in i was in an nft room listening to somebody talk about you know it's kind of the uh badge of honor for uh a, 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 a streetwear designer or one of those kind of artists to get a cease and desist from one of those big brands because that right. means that they found you like uh -huh. your shit's got so popular that they have to tell you like stop using our shit and that's kind of their badge of honor right. but then it's a fine line between somebody like virgil somebody like trouble andrew where you're doing you know flips on these luxury brands and now they are hiring you you know what i'm saying you know, like crazy because these brands are also starting to realize that a lot of these designers coming up they kind of got a, a better pulse of like the zeitgeist so like the age coming up of the yeah. youth yeah, yeah and as like we want you on our team exactly <laughs> you know what and, I'm saying? as a household brand yeah. that's been here you know what i'm yeah. saying what really what really predicates you still staying here and moving towards the future is literally how the youth is representing to your brand yeah. like through time and time again so now it's like oh you guys like remixes and things like that yeah nature. yeah so now when we see these nfts and metaverses we'll delve into it later they're starting to see well it's like oh well we can in a way if we embrace this our brand can even be more omnipotent exactly instead of trying to fight it. exactly because there's exactly. so many secondary sales these brands are not seeing and not like yeah. i give a fuck about lining their pockets or more but that's how they're they're viewing it yeah, they're, they're like yo they're y'all are making your brand on my shit yeah so you know what I might as well utilize your platform because yeah. you're touching a base of people I can't get to. It's real niche. Exactly. It's niche, exactly. but it's powerful because those are who are dictating the trends of where you guys all spend your money. The exactly. rest of it. Exactly. So it's like, and ah, when you see, to, and so I feel like sometimes here, too, know? these luxury brands didn't realize that, uh, you know, this 
the, these price points aren't out of reach for these skateboarders. You know what right, I'm saying? Shit right. like that. It's like right. you see you see these skateboarders lining up for Supreme, which costs the same shit as like Louis Vuitton. You know what right. I'm saying? So it's like they'll spend on it. They just you know gotta fuck with it, and it's gotta be uh true you know what i'm saying and uh some of the yeah like the, the designers that we're touching on they were already in those you know what i'm saying in those communities like they were building them exactly like, in real exactly. time you know what i'm saying so uh, it's a full circle yeah. thing you know what i'm saying so then you know that she gets appreciated for what it is and when you look at back in retrospect you're like wow you know kind of defined the era mm -hmm. and it kind of set the precedent for how it evolves from here now you know mm -hmm. what i'm saying and, it's crazy because um I, I mean just honestly speaking like virgil wasn't even somebody that necessarily i was like like inspired me yeah, yeah. like you know what i'm saying i respect what he did 100 I, like I, I appreciate the grind i always appreciate you know respect of grinds but you know definitely now when you look at it in the culminative you know what i'm saying just looking at everything that he did and what he left and moving forward i'm like yeah man that really left a mark and really like uh planted multiple seeds within like the next generation coming up so i guess that's really that's what it's about when you know a lot of you know me and you at least you know we talk a lot about just you know your purpose being fulfilled and what you're trying to do out here type mm -hmm. thing you know what i'm saying and god willing you you'd, you'd want yourself to be able to do that for a very long time you know yeah. but um whenever you know what i'm saying whenever it is your time to go if you can at least be like yo i did that you know at least you know what i'm saying like at least you did that you know what i'm yeah. saying i think he definitely did that and then some so i think you know, that's, something that's great just on top of that like i agree 100 percent with that on top of that i feel like uh a whole nother inspiration to me is when people will t talk about like all the shit that you did when you're gone you know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. I've learned so much about Virgil Abloh over the last, like, couple of weeks, bro. Because, right. like, to your point, uh, he ain't necessarily inspire me in any kind of ways. But, like, I've, of course, like, you can't be in culture and not hear his name, not see what he's doing. Right. So I've always been like, okay, you know what I'm saying? Like, this nigga's moving. You know what I'm saying? But right. now that he's kind of passed, I feel... Like, I've now learned, like, oh, like, he literally directly influenced this person who I've fucked with for a long time. Right. He literally directly influenced this person who I fucked with for a long time. You right. know what I'm saying? So, like, when when those types of things happen, um, or when you see that kind of impact on people that you respect, it's like, oh, like, that bro, nigga was yeah, in a bag I didn't even realize. Yeah, you know bro, what I'm any, saying? Like, yeah, bro, any influence to, like, the thought of the age or shit mm -hmm. like that, like, that's huge. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's huge because just give that five to ten years, you know what I'm saying? The creators and what they're creating is, like, you know what I'm saying? You planted that seed, you know what yeah. I'm saying? That's, that's a big really fact, dope. man. So, uh, yeah, man, rest in peace to Virgil.